Hello everybody, Jamie the Board Game Man, and today we're looking at a game from Game Right from the year 2021. It is a one to six player game. It is called Super Mega Lucky Box. Now in this game, what you're doing is when a card is flipped over, you're trying to match that number with three cards you have in front of you. Every time you finish off a row, it gives you a bonus square that you can mark off, whether it will show you a number that you have to choose, or it'll give you a question mark where you can pick any other box to, to mark off, or it'll give you a moon, star, or lightning bolts. So it is a great little game. Whoever has the most points after four rounds wins the game. So let's head on over to the gamers table where I'm going to show you how to play Super Mega Lucky Box. Here we are at the gaming table with Super Mega Lucky Box. Let's go over the components and I'll show you the setup and of course on how to play. You have your instruction booklet right here. You also have some lightning bolt tokens. You have some moon tokens. You have six dry erase markers. You also have your what they call Super Mega Scorecards. You're going to have six of those. You're also going to have 60 Lucky Box cards that are here. These are, the these are the game pieces that you use right here. And then you also have what you call the 18 number cards, numbered 1 through 9. You use 9 per round, and then you go 4 rounds. Whoever has the most points in after 4 rounds wins the game. Let me go ahead and get this set up. All right, so I have a setup for a two-player game. And like I said in the intro there, whoever has the most points after four rounds wins the game. So first of all, you're going to start off with four of these lightning tokens. You're also going to start off with a super mega scorecard. And then you're going to have five of the mega scorecards here. What you're going to do is you're going to choose three of these five and go ahead and discard the other two. You want to make sure that you look and see that you have one through nine on at least a couple of these cards because you'd really hate to have a card, the number come up and you don't have it on one of your cards. So you just want to keep an eye out of what you're going for. You also see that you have lightning bolts, stars, moons, all sorts of good stuff. You have numbers on the side, question marks, because that these are actual little bonuses you get if you when you finish a row, which I will go over. So let's just say I'm going to go ahead and pick this one, this one, and... Let's go with this one. Okay, so I'm going to choose these three. These two go in discard. <clears throat> now, let's see, this player, there's this one, this one, and this one. These two will be discarded. And you will start off with three of these cards, which I will face your direction. That way you can see them. Okay, and then here are my three. All right. And what you're doing is it's kind of sort of like a bingo, where when you finish a row either horizontally or um, vertically, no diagonal here, then you actually get the bonus that's on the outside. And I'll go over these in just a moment. Let me go ahead and go over a couple of these rows of these cards that we're going to do. So you have 18 of these total cards in your possession. And what you'll do is you'll take out nine of them per round. So this is going to be round number one. You're going to take nine of those 18 cards, and you're going to put them out one by one as you mark them off on your little uh, cards here. So let's just say the first number is an 8. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at your cards and you're going to see if you can find an 8 and see if that's an 8 that you actually want to use. You want to start building a row so you can get those little bonuses here. So for instance, in this case, and everyone plays simultaneously, which is really nice too, so it makes the game go a lot faster. And as for me, I'm going to go ahead and mark off this 8 right here. So I'm going to put an X through here. This player is going to look over here. He's going to say, I'm going to go ahead and mark off this 8 right here. Okay? And that finishes the first card. You're going to flip over the second card. It's a 7. So I'm going to look around and say, okay, let's see. How do I want to do this? I have a 7. I have a couple 7s on this card, but that's the only card I have a 7 on. So i got to remember that next round, which I'll go over. Um, that's why you always want to keep track of what numbers you have on your cards. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off this 7 so I can start a little row here. Here we got a 7. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to go ahead and place a 7 on there. Now, you don't have to place it on your same card. You can place it on whatever card you want. 
But like I said, I mean, when you're trying to get a row together, try to get some kind of a bonus. So let's see, the third card comes out. It is a one. Okay, I'm going to need some more room here because there's nine cards coming out here. So one will be the next one. So I'm going to look on these cards and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and mark off this one right here. So I mark off this one. He's going to look on his cards. He's going to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and mark off this one right here. That's pretty much what you're doing throughout the round. Next one is a four. Okay. So he's going to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I'm going to go ahead and mark off this four. See if I can go after this lightning bolt here. And I'm going to go ahead and mark off this four right here. So then the next one's going to be a six. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Let's see. Okay, he's got this six right here. This is perfect. So he's going to go ahead and mark this off here. He's going to go ahead and receive a moon. So he gets a moon token, which I'll go over that in a moment, what those moons are for. And then I have to go in here and try to check out a six on my end. I'm going to go ahead and check mark this six here, because I'm going to try to go for a double lightning bolt here. Sixth is going to be a nine. So a nine has come out. I'm going to go ahead and use this nine here. And now I'm going to get these two more lightning bolts right here. So now i got six of these things. I'm going to go over here. He's going to go ahead and mark off this nine. That way he gets this lightning bolt and adds it to his arsenal here. And that's all we got going on that one. So here we go with the seventh card of the round is a two. So we're going to look around and see what do we want to do. Let's see. How about... I'm going to go ahead, well, obviously I want to mark this one off, because this will mark off this row, and I will get another lightning bolt. All right. He's going to look on his card and see where a two is, and he's going to go ahead and mark off this one. He's going to go for this lightning bolt here. Card number eight of the round is a five. So he's going to go ahead and we're going to take a look and see what we want to do here. And I'm going to go ahead and mark off this five here. And he's going to look on his card. He's going to go ahead and mark off this five right here. Okay. And the final card of the round is another one. So we're going to go ahead and look at our cards and see what we want to do here. Uh, let's see. One. Now I'm going to give you an example. Right now this is a perfect time to show you what these lightning bolts do. What these lightning, lightning bolts allow you to do is for every one of these lightning bolts you want to use, you can go one away from the number that's on the card. So say, for instance, on mine, <clears throat> I don't want to really go for this one because it's in the, there's nothing lined up with it. But I want to start a row here. So I have a two right here. So what I can do is I can use one of these lightning bolts and mark off the two. There we go. For instance, on this one, let's just say he wants to go for this one right here. He wants to finish this row off. He wants to get that question mark there. So he's three off from that. So what he can do is he can use three of these lightning bolts, because the number's one, four is three away. So he can use three of these lightning bolts and mark off the four. So that's what the lightning bolts are for, is they allow you to use it for every one number that's away from the card that you're going to go, okay? So that's what the lightning bolts are for. So it's, sometimes it's good to bulk up on those, because later on in the rounds, when you're starting to cross off these, these cards here, you're going to have less and less of like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You might have to utilize them later. So that's the use of the lightning bolts. You see here, I finished off the row here. I have a question mark. The question mark allows me to choose any one of these numbers on any of these boards that I so choose to do. So I finish off this row. I'm going to go ahead and cross off this question mark. I'm going to go ahead and go for the 3. That way this finishes that row and I get a lightning bolt back. So now I have 3. All right. For instance, if you get a moon, obviously what happens is you get a moon. And what the moons do is they are very similar to, if you're, simil if you're um, familiar with Sushi Go, with the pudding. Whoever has the most pudding at the end of the game gets six bonus points. And if you have the least amount of uh, puddings, you get minus six points. This is the same exact thing the moons do. You don't get any points for the moons until the end of the game. At the end of four rounds, you're going to look at each player to see how many moons and say he had three and I had two, he would get six bonus points and I would get minus six bonus points. So that's what the moons are for. Okay. 
these numbers on the end of the rows, when you finish off a row, then you get to actually choose that nine. So say I cross off this row, okay, I get a bonus of an extra nine that I get to choose. So let's just say I marked off this row, I get, <coughs> excuse me, I get a nine, I can use it to cross off any one of these nines, like so. So that's the little bonuses that you get when you finish off a row with a number, is you actually get to utilize that number on the card. Question mark lets you do any number on the card. Moon is you pick up a moon. Lightning bolts, you pick up a lightning bolt. In this case, I had a double lightning bolt, so I was able to pick up two. A star gives you little bonus points at the end of each round. Now let's go ahead and go over the little scorecard, because we're at the end of the first round. Okay, I want to show you how this works. The first box here is if you completed a card, say in, in bingo terms, you did a blackout. I was able to con completely finish that card. For that first round, you get 15 points for every card that you finished. So if I finished one in this round, I would go ahead and put 15 in this box. If I finished two of these cards, which would be really tough to do in one round, but if you, in the first round at least, then you would put 30. Okay, if you finished two boxes in that round. So that's what that first section is for. The second section are the stars. The stars, if you did one star in that round, you get one point. If you get two stars, you get four points. And if you get three stars in that round, you get nine points. So I neither one of us got any stars in that round. So we would leave that blank. This would go zero. Yes, you put zero in there. Okay. Now... Oh, I'm sorry, this is total. This is for the end of the game. I'm sorry. So you don't want to put anything in there till the end of the game. This is only end game right here. Sorry about that. So what you would do is you would go ahead, say I had a star in this round, and I would go ahead and circle the one star there. Okay. The only thing you do per round are the boxes. And when you fill them out. Okay, sorry about that. A little hiccup there. All right. And that's all you do at the end of the first round is you're going to go ahead and just keep track of how many boxes you've X'd out and how many stars you got. Okay. Now you see here, there's the moons I was talking about right here. See, it says if you have the most, you get plus six, and the least, you get minus six. That's at the end of the game. All right. So we're at the end of the first round. Okay. Uh, let's see. This person didn't get uh, this one almost crossed. Well, of course, I was doing an example here. So let's just say this one. Okay. We didn't have any finished ones. There was no stars. So we leave that blank. Okay. Now we begin the second round. So what happens now is these get cleared out. Okay, so we're going to clear these out. Then you're going to place the remaining nine cards that you had right here. You're going to put these aside, okay? And now you're going to have three of these cards to look at, and you're going to add one of these to your playing surface. So each player is going to receive three of those. You're going to choose one. You're going to look it up and say, okay, well, I'm going to look at my situation here. And let's see, I might need some, uh, let's see, I got some one, two, well, my one, two, and threes are a little bit on the low side, but I do have some here. Four, five, and six look pretty good. Seven, eight, nine, I've used quite a few of those. So I want to make sure I want to have seven, eight, nine in there. So I'm going to go ahead and use this card here. I'm going to add this to my game here. I'm going to place this here. These two get done. This player is going to go ahead and choose, of course, we use this as an example. So let's go ahead and erase these. This row here, I was using that as an example. And let's say he's probably going to go with, because he did get rid of a lot of seven, eight, nines, four, five, sixes. But the one, two, and three, you might need a few more, because he only has one, one set of one, two, and three. He doesn't have any more here. So he's going to go ahead and go with this. I'm going to choose this. These two go in the discard. And now we start round two. We're going to start over. Here we go. First number is a six. So obviously, I want to choose this here. This allows me to continue on, and I have a question mark. I can choose any number I want. I'm going to go ahead and go for the 8, because I want to get this moon here, because he has one moon over here. I don't have any yet, so I want to make sure that I keep pace with that other player there. That way, I don't get pinged for minus 6 at the end of the game. So this player over here is going to look at their cards and see what 6 do I want to use. He's obviously going to use this 6 here. He goes ahead and he finishes that row and he gets a lightning bolt. Ta da! Okay. <clears throat> You're going to keep going on like this. Two. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my lightning bolts. That way I can utilize a three. 
And now I can use this for any number I want. So what I'll do is I'll cross this off. I'm going to use it for this 5. That way I get my moon. There we go. And now I have a moon in my possession. Okay. He's going to look at his 2s and see what 2 do I want to use here. What he can do, just so I can show you, he can use three of his lightning bolts and finish off with his five. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to use these three lightning bolts. He crosses off the five. Now, don't forget, you get that bonus two. So he's going to look and see where he can use a two. And he's going to go ahead and you push this two here. Now, one little caveat here is when you're using the lightning bolts and you're marking off a number, when you get a bonus number, like say you get this nine, you are not allowed to use these lightning bolts towards the bonus numbers. So say you had a 9 and you have no 9s remaining, you just forfeit that 9. You cannot use a lightning bolt, oh, I want to do an 8 instead. You cannot do that. Bonus numbers, that's the number you have to cross off. If you don't have that to cross off, you just forfeit it and you move on. And that's how that works there. You're going to continue doing this. Um, you're going to continue going through all the 9 of these. And then what you'll do is after you go through all 9 of them again, you're going to go ahead and shuffle these cards up because there's only 18 of them. Okay, and then just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put the nine here, you put the other nine there, and then you continue on. And like I said, at the end of that second round, he completed this board. So at the end of the second round, he would get 12 points. So you can see the earlier you finish off these boards, the more points you get. Because you can get 12 points for every board you fix. Then in the third round, you get 10 points for every board you black out. And then the fourth round, you get eight points for every one you block out. Obviously, you're going to go ahead and, you know, if you have some stars along the way, you're going to add these points along. So let's just say you had this. Say you finished one box here, and say you finished one here. Okay? So this is how this works. So what you'll do is you're going to add up the total amount of stars you had throughout all the rounds. So you get 4, 8, 12, 13. So you're going to put 13 here. Then what you're going to do is at the end of the game, any cards that are left over, you're going to get one point for every two X's. So for instance, here's one point, two points. I would get two more points for these two. So I'll put that here and I'll show you up close. See where it has two X's equals one. So that's what that means. Do I have the most moons? Well, let's just say he does. So he gets six points for this. You're gonna add all these together. So let's just say I have 22, 30, 43, 45, 51. So my mega total here would be 51 points. Let's just say over here, 0, 0. See, I got two done there and one there. So let's see how this works here. So in this game, in my situation, if we fast forward, I get 28, and then I go 1, that's 10, 14, I get 15 in the stars. And let's just say I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 points. Okay? And I don't have the most stars. So in this case, I would have 28, 28 plus 15, 35, 43, 49, minus a 6 would be 43. That means this player right here would end up winning the game 51 to 43. And that, my friends, is the Super Mega Lucky Box. So let's head on over to the game room, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on Super Mega Lucky Box. Well, first of all, I have to give props to Babs. She's one of my wonderful subscribers on here. She's the one that mentioned it to me um, and said that it was on Board Game Arena. It's in trials right now. Um, it's not to the public yet because her and I are actually reviewers on there. So we can actually take a quick sneak peek of games before they actually go on there to see, okay, is this game good enough to show up on our website? And let me tell you, I played a few games. I have yet to play this in person because I recently just found this game. Um, it is a lot of fun. It is great. You start off with, like I said, those three little... I like it. Um, I didn't realize when you actually get the game, it's actually markers. So you actually... It's a dry erase, so those little boards are actually dry erase. You use a marker, you wipe them, and then you wipe them off. That's great. I love that. That way, it's just like the other... You know, like the welcome twos and the other ones where you can reuse them over and over again. I love that. So you're not paper where as soon as you're done, you rip it off, you throw it away. <clears throat> so I do like that they have the wipe erase markers on there. Um, I like the way the moons work, which are exactly, exactly the way pudding works in uh, Sushi Go. 
Or if you have the most moons, you get six points. If you have the least amount of moons, you get minus six points. Exactly the same as Sushi Go. So those you don't want to just fluff off with the moons because next thing you know, uh-oh, I don't have any moons. And you look at every other players and you have like two or three, you're like, oh man, I'm going to have minus six points at the end. So something is like, like I said, just like putting in Super, um, in Super, <laughs> in uh, Sushi Go. Um, the stars are pretty cool. Those are nice little bonuses where if you, if you can get three in a round, that's a lot of points you can add to your score. Um, if you finish off a box, like you do like a like in bingo, if you want to do a blackout, I guess you can call it. If you black out a square, that's, that's I mean, a, a card, that's even better. The one thing you really got to pay attention to is after every round when you're getting a card, you really got to pay attention to what numbers you still have available. Because I did that once um, when I was playing Babs on uh, BGA there. I wasn't, uh, the first couple games I played, I wasn't paying attention to what cards I still had and what numbers. Because not every single card has one through nine on it. So say I might have burned through my four, fives, and sixes, whatever, in my first couple cards. Well, they give you more cards you could choose from, and I didn't pay attention to that. I didn't pick one that had more four, fives, and sixes. So the second round came along, and all of a sudden, four, six. And I'm looking at all my cards going, oh my gosh, I don't have any four, fives, and sixes. You know, so you got to pay attention to which ones you've actually burned through in your first round. So that way you can get more of them in the following rounds. So that's something you have to keep in mind, too. And I didn't do that the first couple games. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Okay. So you catch on really quick uh, how these cards work. And then later on down the road, there might be a card where you don't get anything if you finish a row. There are some that there's nothing there. So you want to keep an eye on that. Some of them will give you double moons. Some of them will give you double. I don't know if there's any triple. I don't know if there's a, but I know there's double lightning bolts where they give you two of them. And those lightning bolts can really, really come in handy. You want to try to save those as long as you can, <clears throat> because towards the end, when you start filling up these, these cards, you're going to start using those lightning bolts. Say an eight comes up and you're like, uh-oh, I don't have any eights. Okay, good. I have some lightning bolts. I can use those. You know, if I have one lightning bolt, I can put it towards a seven or a nine or if I have two. So getting those lightning bolts are really kind of important. They can really come in handy later on in the game. Like I said, once you start filling out those cards, you know, you might not have that specific number that it's asking for, but that's when those lightning bolts really, really come in handy. Um, same with, you know, making, just paying attention to what those rows you're filling out. What do you need? Do you want some stars for bonus points? Well, I got, let's just start working on that row. Now I might need, I might get a little low on lightning bolts. Maybe I should continue this row so I can get more lightning bolts and so on. Or the moons, you know, I'm like, oh shoot, I don't have any moons here. I better start paying attention to rows that give me moons. So I love this game. It, it seems very simple, but there is a lot of strategy involved in this game. It doesn't look like much when you're looking at it going, this, I mean, I, and I do like the look. It has like that, um, you know those after school special when we were kids? I can't think of what it's called. High school, what was it? High school rock or something. It was those little, you know, talking about bills and, and vetoes and all that. It kind of has that same kind of lettering kind of cool look to it. I like that, that 70s, you know, 70s vibe to it with the fat letters and stuff. I love the way this game looks. I love that it's a small little box. Everything is very compact and tiny, so it, it doesn't take much room at all. And I think they did a great job on this. So I'm definitely giving this a thumbs up from Game Right. I think it's a great game to play. You need to check it out. Thank you again, Baz, for turning me on to this game. I got lucky. This was actually sitting at McKay's one day, literally, I think maybe a week or two after she mentioned it to me. It was just sitting there. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I snagged it. I think I only got it for, I, I don't know if it was 10 bucks or maybe even less than that. <clears throat> I was able to use my credits towards it. And I was very happy when I got it. And it was actually, um, no, it was actually open. But everything was still sealed inside. So the box was open. The wrapping wasn't around it. But everything inside was still, uh, like, probably somebody looked at it and said, what is this? And just turned it in. So I'll thank you, whoever it was that turned it into McKay's. Because this is a, actually a brand new game. I mean, it's only a year old. This came out last year in 2021. So... I, you know, I love it. So if you can find it, get it. It is a lot of fun, even for adults. I mean, it doesn't have to be for kids. I know it looks like a kiddie game, but it actually, I mean, it has some good enough strategy in there where, you know, if, if you uh, enjoy games like this, even if you're a non-gamer, I think a lot of non-gamers will like this game too, because it's not overly heavy, but it's enough that you really makes you think about, okay, what kind of card should I get? Should I go after moons? Should I go after some bonus points with stars? Um, you know, maybe I should go after that question mark row because I need to fill in that. There's a lot of stuff you're thinking about in four uh, four rounds of this game. So it is a lot of fun. Get it if you can. That is my review. 
Thank you so much for watching as always. I appreciate your support and happy gaming.